Shalom, Mubaraka, Mishpaka, peace and blessings, family. In this video, we're going to be talking about another Levitical holy cleansing herb. Last video, we talked about hyssop, which is truly sagebrush and white sage. This video, we're going to be talking about scarlet. All right, it's called scarlet in the Bible, but in modern day, it's called red amaranth flowers. All right, let's explain. So, when we read scripture, we'll see a lot of things about a scarlet thread. We'll see scarlet uh, curtains in the tabernacle. So, why is scarlet never referred to as a plant and only a color? Uh, let's see, in Genesis 38 and 28, it says, And it came to pass, when she travailed, that the one put out his hand, and the midwife took and bound upon his hand, a scarlet thread saying this came out first so as we can see the amaranth flowers have been used by native americans to produce a red or hot pink dye you can take this plant and make dye with it that's that's how this plant is indeed the biblical scarlet see that that's the biblical scarlet color right there And you can also make this hot pink, you know, depending on the whiteness of the wool. Now, the Hebrew word for scarlet means worm. As you can see, a maggot, grub, or worm, right? Then, this is what we know about that. This is what they tell us. In the Middle East, the crimson worm is used to make red dye, but this cannot be biblically accurate because worms are unclean. Therefore, using their blood to make scarlet would be too ma. Remember, the curtains of the tabernacle had this dye. The, the tabernacle could not have any uncleanness around it, let alone be a part of it, right? The priest could not go into the tabernacle unclean. A person could not go into the tabernacle unclean. The you, you had to take off your shoes when you're near the tabernacle. You had to wash your hands before going into the tabernacle. You had to have clean clothing when you went into the tabernacle. Everything had to be clean. So if you're using an unclean animal to produce a color for the tent, that would be a contradiction which we know y'all doesn't deal with, that would be confusing, right? And here's the thing. These so-called worms in the Middle East, which are the crimson worm, technically are not even really worms. They're just a type of larvae, but they're not a worm, right? Look at them. Does that look like a worm to you? If I'm not mistaken, that thing has legs on it. Uh, but it does make some very bright red color similar to the beetle that's found in New Mexico and Arizona that they use to make red 40. It's probably related to that animal as well. Now, anyway, it's clear that the scarlet got its name from its shape. The flowers are long and tube shaped, just like worms. So I can imagine, uh, you know, the Canaanites, the people, the first people on that land, the people who also spoke you know, a language very similar to Hebrew, and they are the ones that, you know, probably named this plant. They looked upon the plant and said, oh, what to call it? Well, I'm just going to call it the worm plant. And it became the Tula, the Tulath plant, um, because it looks like a worm. Look how the leaves droop down, you know, in a worm-like uh, manner. And it, it just makes sense. I mean, it, they look like worms, can, do they not? And in this environment, they're probably the only plant that has this worm-like shape. You know, it's a kind of a rare shape to see in a plant. I mean, I know there's other plants that have this similar shape, but in this environment, in this area, that's a rare shape. Now, today, the plant may still be found in a small range through the Holy Land. This plant is, it just shows you that there's a plant that's shaped like a worm Scarlet means worm in Hebrew and is also used to make red dye. So that right there is enough proof. I don't know what else 
to, to show you, but that alone is enough proof that this is indeed the biblical scarlet plant. On top of that, it grows in the Holy Land, right? And, you know, it's a very healthy and edible plant as well. Let me just add that when we look at the tent of the tabernacle, we see that it was three colors. It was scarlet, it was blue, and it was purple. All three of these colors were derived from some type of plant, right? They didn't come from oysters and stuff like they tell us. They didn't come from worms and oysters like they tell us, right? Because those are unclean animals. Like if you Google it, they'll literally tell you that oysters, snails, and worms were used to make these these colors but what they don't understand is that in western north america there are several different plant wild plant varieties that make those colors you don't have to go to the unclean animals see when you live in the middle east where barely anything grows you have to use the wildlife to make color but no you don't have to use the wildlife when you have uh, an abundance of wild shrubbery that only can be found in the americas growing in this area so of course they use plants to make these high vibrational colors so the scarlet is one of them. We're going to be talking about what they use to make blue. We're going to be talking about what they use to make uh, 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 purple as well in another video. So how can we use this plant to benefit our spirit? Well, it is one of the three holy cleansing plants. So of course, this plant will cleanse your spirit. It will help raise the vibration of your spirit and... Um, it will help you literally get closer to godliness. Now, this is the Hopi Red Dye Amaranth plant that you're looking at. This is the specific type of amaranth that was used to make what we call scarlet, right? Where you take the leaves and the seeds of the Hopi Red Dye Amaranth. You use that to make the red dye that we use to dye the tents of the tabernacle, you know, etc. We use that a lot. Now, first thing they would do is they would take the plant, the flowers, and they would dry the flowers. What they do is called separating the wheat from the chaff. And of course, this would be the chaff. And and this will be the wheat or simply, you know, the amaranth seed, the part that we eat. But in this case, we don't eat it. We use it as dye and we eat this part, which is the chaff, which normally in most grains, you throw that part away. But with the amaranth plant, you can eat the entire thing. The leaves can also be eaten. The entire plant can be eaten. And, and the seeds are full of vitamin C as well. So if you eat it, it will electrify you. It will, it will help you with neurological problems. It'll give you energy, it'll give you electrolytes, etc. Now, anyway, um, here's the thing that you have to understand, right? The flower, the beautiful flowers themselves are not what we use to make the red dye. The seeds are what we use to make the red dye. However, the flower themselves still contain the high vibration um, that allows you to cleanse your spirit. So all you have to do if you live in an area where amaranth grows, all you have to do is dip this in some water and sprinkle it. It's very simple. Sprinkle it on anything. It will literally raise the vibration. It will literally electrify whatever you sprinkle it upon. You understand what I'm telling you? So you got to understand how the spiritual world works, man. Everything has a light, has an aura, has an electromagnetic field, right? But our eyes are not strong enough to see the light, you know? I can see auras a little bit, but not everybody can. I can see the colors that are surround people. I can see the light that, that comes off of people. I'm getting better and better at it. And, uh, but not everybody can see that. But when you dip this in some water, and sprinkle and fling that water onto somebody, their light will shine a little bit brighter because they have been cleansed. And you can do this as much as possible. You can do it as a ritual to keep yourself cleansed. You have to understand 
when we are on this path of enlightenment, enlightenment is more than just getting knowledge. It's also to get your light back, get your light back, meaning to literally get your light back. Right. Because Adam and Eve were originally created as light beings. But when they sin, their vibration fell and then they saw their nakedness when they looked down instead of seeing light. And then because y'all didn't see two lights walking around the garden, he was like, Adam, where are you? Because they were hiding because they had no light anymore. Now, ever since Adam and Eve, we had humans who didn't have a bright light like the angels have a bright light that surround them. Didn't y'all say, let's make man in our image, in our likeness? Adam and Eve were literally in, our, in, in the image of the angels. That's why they were shining brightly. And when they fell into sin, guess what? Their vibration literally fell. And all I'm trying to do is help my followers get their light back. And it's not impossible. Moses did it when his face started shining brightly. And the book of Daniel said in the future, as in a future prophecy, that the righteous in that day will shine like the brightness of the firmament. Right. What are the brightness? Of, what's the brightness of the firmament? That's the lights in the sky. So we'll be shining as bright as the stars, as bright as the moon, as bright as the sun. The righteous will do that in that day. So. I'm trying to teach you guys that we have to get back to our God level. If you, it, it, our God level is literally us shining, physically shining. We can see it. All right. This is the true path to enlightenment. I'm trying to make you enlighten yourself. It's more than just a mental thing. It's a physical and it's a spiritual thing. We have to enlighten ourselves. And just like a tuning fork, right? You take a tuning fork and you hit that tuning fork, it says bing, and then eventually stops. You gotta hit it again, bing, and eventually stop. That's your vibration. It's extremely difficult to keep your vibration going. Once you are doing righteous activities, every time you do something righteous, every time you do something godly, every time you do something holy, your vibration, your, your tuning fork just got struck. Now you're now you're vibrating high, but vibrations don't last forever. It starts to go down. Your vibration starts to go down. You go to sleep. You wake up. It's back to normal. So what I'm telling you guys is hit that tuning fork as much as possible. Keep hitting it over and over and over. And eventually it'll start vibrating so much, right? That you will literally begin to shine. Guys, this is not some mysticism this is real stuff this is actual truth that i'm trying to show you guys so the amaranth plant all you have to do is dip it in water just like the sage all you have to do is dip it in water just like the uh cedar all you have to do is dip it in water sprinkle it now you can also burn it you know you know electrify everything in the house you just like you can burn the cedar wood or you can burn the hyssop but you also can dip it when you dip it it just makes living water that sprinkles on you full of negative ions full of charging things things that charge you because all you have you have to understand, the spirit is just electricity all the look the, the only difference between a light bulb and you is that there's a there's two different types of electricity there's empty electricity and then there's electricity with memory see the spirit is electricity with memory because if i take a light bulb and plug it into the wall boom it starts to shine when i unplug it it goes out me as a human i'm full of electricity which I, which is called a spirit which is called chi which is called my electromagnetic field which is called a ruach right I'm full of that. <clears throat> and when I die, that electricity, that spirit, that chi will leave my body. But my my physical body would rot into the earth. Now, I still live on after I die. 
because the electricity still got, has to go somewhere. When I unplug the light bulb, that electricity just so happens to not be flowing through the specific stream of current. It flows somewhere else. So we are electric beings and we can literally shine again and this is how we shine again guys